What up, what up? It's your homeboy, Maul the Pimp, a.k.a. MTP, and welcome to another edition of Stories from the Pimp. This story right here, I'm going to tell y'all, uh, the reason I'm speaking on this because I always hear a bunch of questions and uh, rumors of, like, what happened to the Chopper City boys, man? Like, what happened to them? How did they break up? Why did they break up? Like, what happened? You follow me? So, uh, let me give y'all the spill with my brothers, the Chopper City boys. When I first came to New Orleans, they was all a four-man group, you dig? And uh, Gar, Snipe, Hakilza, rest in peace via Mike, you feel me? So uh, they was all mashing, doing their thing. In 2005, Hurricane Katrina hit, and we had to relocate to Detroit. But in the midst of the relocation to Detroit, uh, when it first hit, before we actually got to Detroit, Carol Dorsett, Cynthia Dorsett, B.G. Hakeem, they all went to Houston. I think God went to Arkansas. I forgot what night went. Mike stayed in New Orleans and I came to Tennessee. You feel me? So uh, when we finally relocated to Detroit. By this time, it's time to start working on their first debut solo album, which was called We Got This. At the time, we had a record deal with Koch, Chopper City slash Koch, like a joint venture. So it was time to work on the Chopper City Boys album, We Got This. We recorded half the album in New Orleans and recorded the remainder of it in Detroit once we got up there. Now, we fly to Atlanta. So, in the midst of all this, how kills us start having health problems. You follow what I'm saying? So, uh, we get to Atlanta to shoot the first video, the first single off the video, Make Them Mad, which is produced by David Banner. So, when we get to Atlanta to shoot the video, uh, that's when Carl realized that Hakeem's health problems wouldn't be. It, was, it would be better to not have him in the group based on the things he was going through. So they decided after we shot the video to kind of pull him back from the group and let him get his health together. You follow what I'm saying? So now, there's one member gone right there, four-man group. Hakeem has been pulled back for health issues. So Hakeem was pulled back. So now it's Gar, Snipe, and VL Mike mashing together with BG. You did four, group, four men, one gone, three left. So uh, about a year later, Via Mike went on his little rant or whatever to where he was feeling some kind of way towards BG. He left the group and decided to start dissing BG. Now there's two people gone, so now it's down to Gar and Snipe. Mike left, and then in 2008 of April, Mike ended up getting killed. You feel what I'm saying? So now it's just BG and his Chopper City Bars are Gar and Snipe. In the midst of that, we did a, a deal with Asylum, Asylum slash Asylum Warner Brothers for an album called uh, BG and the Chopper City Boys, Life in the Concrete Jungle, which is a hard-ass album. You feel me? Hard-ass album. We did, a, we did a deal with that for Asylum Warner Brothers. After that album came out, Snipe decided that he wanted to move on and do his own thing. You feel what I'm saying? So Snipe left the, the group, left the label, and started his own thing called CPO, Clutch Players Only, I think. So now it's just BG and Gar. You feel me? They're still repping Chopper City and Chopper City Boys, but technically at this time, it's no Chopper City Boys no more. God the last man standing. And God was always BG's hype man. You feel me? So now when BG doing shows, it's just him and God. And then when uh, BG caught his situation, which is what he's in jail for now, God just stood strong, just, you know, pretty much still holding the throne, representing Chopper City. You follow what I'm saying? And then just because the Chopper City Boys was a brand, he would always still promote that or still push that. You follow what I'm saying? And uh, with that being said, like, that's how the group slowly dismounted. How kills for health problems. Mike left, then was murdered. Snipe left. God stood around, and God was like the last man standing. You feel what I'm saying? And he kept doing his thing until BG went on and caught his own situation. Then eventually, God moved on and started pushing his thing, certified music. You follow what I'm saying? So, uh, I don't like to say that the Chopper City Boys broke up. I don't, I don't like that word, you follow what I'm saying? Because even when certain people left, they still kept a, like a bond or, or a unity, you follow what I'm saying? So I don't say they broke up. I don't say they fell off. I don't say none of that. It was just everybody eventually started going their own separate way. And that's how the group separated, not broke up. That's how they separated, you follow what I'm saying? So shout out to God. You know, God, you know you my nigga. Shout out to Snipe, that's my dog. And shout out to Hot Killzer, you follow what I'm saying? Rest in peace, VL Mike. Free BG. Another so, episode. Of Go so ahead. Let me let me ask you this. So, being a huge fan of BG, I followed everything he did. So, I was hyped about the Chopper City Boys. Um, 
Hakeem and Mike, bro, like, you know, yeah. what else need to be said about that group? So yeah. how was how was it felt one when that happened to Hakeem and he had to step back? Like did the group feel like damn we lost one of the hardest niggas or or you know, like that everybody feel like and what I mean by everybody, not re- not necessarily the group, but the people, the fans. Like, how did they feel when that happened? Like, first with Hakeem and then Mike. Because, you know, with Hakeem, it, it was a major loss. Because, honestly, like, Hakeem was, to me, probably the best lyricist. I and, can see that. And then Mike just had that, that it factor. You, did, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah, he did. Yeah, he you, did. It's one of the things where you can't say what it is, but he had I know. It. I know exactly what you're talking about. I was like, the answer about how came first, uh, it was a major loss. Now behind the scenes, the group and us, we knew what was going on with Hakeem. We knew it was the best move to pull him back. You follow what I'm saying? So, but to the nation, they didn't understand that because uh, you got to think Hakeem was BG's little brother. So he was the lead. He was the front man. You follow what I'm saying? So they definitely going to be checking for him. He was like Michael Jackson of the Jackson Five. You know what I'm saying? So like people was checking for Hakeem. So all of a sudden he just disappears. The fans want to know what was going on, what how kills they would go do shows, God sniping Mike, what how kills let, what how kills let. So that was always a question that would come up. And then we didn't really want to expose everything that he was going through. So we had to kind of be selective on how they answered that. You follow what I'm saying? Because of what he was going through. Because y'all were trying to keep it respectful and not. Exactly, respectful. exactly, exactly. So they had to be respectful about how they answered that. But at the end of the day, people wanted to see how came. Like the album come out, everybody's on the album cover, everybody's on the album, everybody's on the video, and then we see y'all in person. Where is he? You follow what I'm saying? They got they came up a lot of interviews and all this type of shit. You follow what I'm saying? So it was a uh, the group understood it. So I don't think it hurt the group because they knew how to, they had chemistry without him also. But to the public, the fans want to know what was going on. You follow what I'm saying? So uh, fifty fifty, I guess you could say. Now with VL Mike. Uh, I'm like crazy, bro. Well, VL Mike, man, uh, he just woke up one day and had a problem with BG for whatever reason. You follow what I'm saying? And and uh, he decided to lead a group and go do interviews and go on YouTube and, and take his shots and stuff like that. BG or the group never fed into that, though. Because Mike was still family to us. Even when he was doing it, he was still family. You follow what I'm saying? If, and, uh, if you think about it, the way BG handled the Mike situation is the way Birdman handled the BG situation. <laughs> and, and we've had, me and you've had this conversation, but I've never thought about that analogy until just now. Because think about it, Birdman never responded, at least publicly. Like, nah, he like you know, what y'all know down in New Orleans is different than what we know up yeah, here. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. publicly, yeah. he never like spoke out like none of that, you know, so... Because he still had love for BG. And really, BG still had love for Mike. He didn't have a problem with Mike. He, he didn't understand what Mike's problem was with him. Bro, I hate Mike got killed, bro. I feel like they would have worked that shit out, bro. They would not. Nah, they would have. And, and, they would have. And Chopper City would have. They would have worked it out, bro. Because what people don't know is this. Uh, even when Mike was going public doing that shit, he was still, he sent BG's mama a Carol. He would still hug them and kiss them on the cheek. So it wasn't finna go too far. You feel me? Now, wherever the public might have got out of that, okay, whatever. But it wasn't going to go too far. You feel me? He would still see his man, mama, and aunt, and still hug and kiss them while dissing him. You feel me? So it wasn't going to go that route. You know what I'm saying? Eventually, if that wouldn't have happened to Mike, they would have they fixed it, bro. They would have to have one-on-one sit down without nobody around it, and they could speak how they both felt, and then it would have got fixed, bro. But, you know, he never lived to see that. You feel what I'm saying? So, uh... And then even when I did a few interviews back in the day, people asked me about that shit. I'm not finna speak on that shit, bro, because I know what it really is. I ain't finna give y'all what y'all need to run with publicly. You follow what I'm saying? Because I, I ain't gonna lie, that, that album with BG, Snipe, and Gore, it just... It was, life, it in the, life in the Concrete it, it Jungle. Was, it wasn't the same. It was hard. Life it, in the Concrete Jungle, yeah. It just yeah. wasn't the same. Yeah, Life in the Concrete. And that was a hard-ass album, bro. It was. It that was, was a hard-ass hard. album. It, I think it was harder than their first album, to be honest with you. It was. It's harder than their first album, bro. You know what I'm saying? But ima- imagine Mike... And, and Hakeem on that. Mike brought that element, bro. Mike had that, man. This nigga here, <laughs> <laughs> this nigga Mike, bro, like straight, straight I'm talking he can get on a song talking about fucking bitches. He gonna get on and talking about murdering somebody, bro. And the song about females, you follow what I'm saying? Like, this nigga just was just, this nigga was on 10 at all times. He didn't smoke, he didn't drink. So this was just naturally him. Man, Mike didn't smoke or drink, bro. Really? No, Mike didn't smoke or drink. He take a shot this small, he tips it, bro. 
Mike didn't smoke us drinks. We get on there turned up like that. It ain't no cocaine, it ain't no weed, it ain't no alcohol. This is just naturally him. You follow what I'm saying? And I used to trip off that shit. You feel me? Like it can come, it can be a song about the club, a song about females, a song about I love my mama. He finna go into some kind of way of working into the equation when I'm talking about killing the nigga. You know what I'm saying? Like <laughs> this nigga sick of micro. But if you can imagine all the time in the studio, bro, with Mike, Snipe, Hakeem, and God, I'm the engineer. I love the energy, bro. I love the energy. You know what I'm saying? Hakeem getting on that just he just spitting that shit. God, God is kind of versatile. He can go raw. He can give you some melodies. He can give you some nice little hooks. You feel what I'm saying? Snipe come in. He can, he can go melodic or he can do some female shit. It might come in and just murder, murder, kill, kill. Blah, blah, blah. I'm a, my G and I could kick your hole in your chest. And then, that's Mike right there. But when you put all that shit together, bro, it works. It works. And the thing I like, they would all take direction from me. All of them would. I'd be like, hey, man, say this, say this. Oh, uh, man, do the, do the ad libs like this. Hey, that's like, the greatest feel? thing. People, if you're not an engineer, you don't understand that. Like, right. And then to hear like the fans react, be like, oh, I love this part. And knowing you had input yes. on that, yes. but you can't be like, I'm the one that told you. You got to let them take their credit, but they but they they know, bro. I would coach them on a lot of shit. And they was, I, I never wrote their songs now, but I would be like, man, hey, God, say it like this. I'll tone it down like this. Hey, man, go go back and add this in the ad libs, bro. All right, pimping, whatever you say. Then I put it all together. Oh, okay, I get it. I get it. So, man, salute to my brothers, man. God, Snipe, how kills them, man. Rest in peace, VL, Mike. And that's another episode of Stories from the Pimp, man. So follow me on Instagram and Twitter, at Model Pimp. Go to my website, www.modelpimp.com. And uh, subscribe to my YouTube channel, Pimp Hog TV. And we out here. Salute that.